Cerebral Palsy and the Wingmaker, written and read by Lynette Louise. This is a true story, if you think it can be. Dedication for Sarah. A ten-year-old girl, so sweet and so kind, had a body that lied about her mind. It made her seem void of feelings and thoughts. She couldn't control it. She just could not. She lay in a bed or sat in a chair. Mom moved her about and braided her hair. Yet despite the fact that reason was inert, her heart beat strong for her family's hurt. She wanted to help them achieve their dreams, that her body heal, though it didn't seem possible. So she thought and she thought and she thought and she thought, but her thoughts didn't matter for she couldn't talk. Fact. She couldn't do more than move her right hand an inch or two upon command. Liquid went into a tummy tube, a crippled girl's version of yummy food. To pass her pee or to make a poo, there were tubes and bags with lots to do. Even her spit was sucked away with a special vacuum many times each day. If no one did this or wasn't fast, then on her own fluids she would gag and gasp, drowning, while her wheelchair grabbed her with braces and belts. Stuck in this place, it would be too late for help. <laughs> her siblings loved rambunctious games and wanted her to enjoy the same, so they dragged her down upon the ground, tummy on pillow, head angled down, her, her saliva drained out onto the floor. Her cheek got wet. Her spit smelled sour. They laughed and danced and jumped around. Their feet whizzed by. She breathed in their sound. Then deep amidst that chaotic flurry, the pleasure gained from all the hurry ended. Her little sister, small and sweet, stepped on her shin with tiny feet. Because reason had such skinny bones, it broke in half and made her moan. Twas the only sound her chest could do, so she did it often. Thus no one knew. For five long nights she moaned and cried from tearless eyes that beseeched with pride. When Mom noticed the swollen leg, her jutting shin, her face that begged, she screeched and screeched, you cannot play. When your sisters run off the floor, you stay alone. Thus, reason spent another year or two, sitting and laying in her pee and poo. Her sisters eventually forgot and laid her down in the olden days spot. Her heart did thump, she thought from joy, but it gave way to panic and revealed the ploy. No, it was not joy at all at all, just total fear that her sister might fall. Reason couldn't say, stop running around, I'm afraid you'll hurt me down here on the ground. Blood should rush down, but white was her face, her pupils dilated, tongues swollen in place, spitless. Mom saved the day. Tied her into that chair. Again, nothing to do but to sit and to stare. As her fear faded from present to past, she thought and she thought. She sat and she sat. She sat and she thought, for that's all she could do. Oh, I only wish I could get through. Why can't I move all on my own? Be part of the family, play in my home. Why can't I say thanks, but no, the floor is scary. I don't want to go. Instead, if you don't mind, just wheel me around. Pretend I'm a train. Make a choo-choo sound. Locomotion. Dear 12-year-old reason knew no other life. So it wasn't that bad. But it wasn't that right. Since the pain had screamed, your legs are real, she'd sensed her body and learned to feel, which made reason curious about the pain. Is that called feeling, or is there more to gain? What does it mean, a simple sensation? Is it a different feeling, 
of a lesser creation? Or is there a sensation so foreign from me that to know it is to set myself free? On the other hand, if it's too foreign to know, how can I embrace it and let myself go walking? In this body so unmoving and numb, how can I know what it is to have fun? Wanting the answer, she thought of what she had felt and tried to imagine the rest by herself. But it turns out one ingredient won't bake a cake. She needed more a recipe to make. Now, she could already read, for she had taught herself long ago as she stared up at shelves of books and of boxes, bathroom products with labels. She figured out reading by looking at titles. Forgotten for hours, she would face one direction and learn to read words out of letter formation. Rats, CP, FAS, DID, Down syndrome, ischemia. Most words had no meanings to which she could relate. Like, Tasty and crunchy and filling your plate. Still, she imagined all the day through, seeking sensation through ingredients new. She quested for the knowledge to understand, reading boxes and bottles, brand after brand, longing to see into cookbooks and such, pondering perceptions and cinnamon crunch. What? she wondered. Is it to enjoy all this food? How does it feel to eat and to chew? She read while she prayed for a way just to be a participating part of her family, human. She felt burdened by the way the world busied with her and prayed for her family that there was a cure. As she wished, I want my mom to have a rest, not brush my hair and palpitate my chest. A falling newspaper fluttered in the sun and landed in her lap, a gift for reason. It spoke of a woman who could reach the mind, teach damaged brains and give sight to the blind. The deaf would soon hear as the mute learned to speak. She helped all who believed, though she had no conceit. Still reason felt doubt that one woman could be able to help someone as broken as she. Glimmer? They called her happiness, for she loved to play and free the unfreeable child that way. Happiness, they said, was bright and alive with no idea how it works or why. She simply lacked doubt for herself or her friends, so everyone got from beginning to end. Happiness knew not why she wanted to play with the differently able day upon day. She did know that it gave her wings whenever they learned impossible things. You see, for happiness, nothing was unbelievable to do. So like a tornado, she sucked people through the heaviness. Happiness, it seemed, was a conduit for gain, dissipating doubt, a refreshing rain. Scientists begged her to teach them the gift, but they couldn't understand her. It was just how she lived. She tried to explain, oh, It's not details and such. It's laughing and loving and sucking it up. Then taking an action over and over each day in a game of pretend in a beautiful way. Now Reason read about happiness and wished so darn loud. Her thoughts made a wind that whistled and howled, grabbed onto the newspaper and blew it at Mom who tried to evade it. For she'd always feared fun and ridicule. 
It stuck to her shirt. She blew back like a willow. Her body undulated and puffed like a pillow. The paper climbed up and covered her face. It flapped and it slapped and it stayed in its place. Mom pushed it away and started to curse. But the paper flew round and stuck to her purse. Change is expensive and it frightened Mom's heart. She had what she wanted. No desire to restart. Mom tried not to read it. Because since she was young, she'd wanted a child where the job wasn't done. She wanted a child for whom she would not shirk, but be happy and willing and satisfied with work. Proof. For mom, reason was a reason. The method to say, I'm not a stupid girl like my teachers once claimed. And I'm not the parent who would turn her back. No matter the challenge, I would never do that. I have learned so many things about tubes and spine care. I must be intelligent. I've grown so aware. I know not to fret, just to love, not behest. Not to whine or bemoan, but to always accept. Mom held the belief that good wasn't fun. That entry to heaven came from a job never done. But for reason, that meant no joy came her way. She wanted this happiness, this angel of play. Clownseller. Reason's thoughts were so loud, a hurricane they made, roaring their way out of the martyr charade. Whooshing the paper which flapped at her mom, you have to embrace it, I have to have fun. I hate all this quiet that looks like I'm fine. I don't want to give up and accept all the time. Maybe happiness will push me to not sit in self-pity. Maybe she's crazy. I just don't care, really. All I know is it's time for a new way to be. Please stop seeking pain. Help us both become free. Perhaps we're all martyrs in our own chosen way. But it's time to be different. Be the heroes portrayed. Super people. Mom pictured a prison, which helped her to see. Perceiving through the past was keeping reason unfree. So it wasn't the chair that kept reason contained, but Mom's fear of false hoping for something to change. Reason begged with her eyes, Please, read it, please do. And Mom let the words begin to get through. Syllable by syllable, as if in a trance. Mom read about happiness and her healing play dance. Not knowing why or how she would pay for the help, she dialed the number in the paper and started to yelp. She described reason and said, Only sit! Then she suddenly heard all the limits in it, created. She looked to her daughter to apologize and saw determination in the young girl's eyes. Still, not long after, when happiness stood at the door, Mom found herself worrying about what might be in store for her crumpled-up child in the metal chair with beautiful eyes and luscious hair. Then happiness took reason to her room to play so that happiness could hear whatever reason might say. Well, Mom tried to stop them, saying, Reason can't talk. How can she play? She can't eat. She can't walk. But happiness said, well, that's okay. Maybe we'll pretend she can. Day upon day, recreating. Reason's soul grew bigger right there and then. For she had never thought to just pretend. She decided that instead of thinking on what she had not, she'd think from now on on the what's that she'd got. Happiness explained, it's all just a game. Some people play it again and again, till the I can't turns into I can do anything. I can laugh, I can eat, I can dance, I can sing. That's why I came here to play with delight. 
the I can game. It makes life feel right. Happiness rolled reason about the room while singing the question, What do you want to do? Compelling. Then she played a game of I think I can, friend, while pushing the chariot drawn by pretend. Singing, what gives you purpose? Is it dance, run, or read? Come on, reason, tell me, please. Mom trembled, afraid of the crashing of hope, fearing the damage, should her daughter not cope, with believing in all that possibility. How debilitating if nothing came to be. And surprisingly, within the game, Reason moved her lips, whispered a name. Happiness hushed herself so that she could hear. What did you pretend to say, my dear? Listening. The silence filled the room like mud. Reason tried again. Lips opened up. She stared like a stone at her shelf made of books, Iron horse, she breathed. Happiness looked. She jumped to the shelf following Reason's eyes and discovered there, to her surprise, a book that was titled The Iron Horse, about a girl in a chair being pushed. Of course! Mom fell to the ground, amazed to see the, the hugeness of this possibility. Not only had Reason been able to speak, she'd proven to all that her mind was not weak. Brilliant. Then happiness added a special new game that she called Biofeedback Designed for the Brain. From that moment forth, everything became new, as happiness taught Reason's brain what to do. Since you get what you expect, expecting makes change. Thus, happiness taught the family how to rearrange. During those months, happiness embraced all that play, and Reason practiced pretending, day upon day. She practiced and practiced no matter the outcome. Now that she had a purpose, she found it all fun. Slowly, so slowly, some new skills were born as her family joined in and no longer felt torn. Synergy. Reason fisted her hand. Amazing. Then held a brush, miracle, painted a wheelchair on a canvas with blush, unsurpassed. She got her elbow to bend, learned to clean her teeth, though she often dropped sundries as her fingers were weak. But her arm had grown strong, so if you use the spit tool, she would push you away, and her insistence would rule, till on her own she could swallow that spit. Independence of a sort grew out of it. Once reason shed the role of sweet pet admired, she participated in life and grew happily tired, from leading her siblings to start the family play by blowing a whistle several times a day. Persistence. Mom and Reason's nurses now saw work as games, and everyone got better in innumerable ways. They all had a new vision of this two-bridden child as a girl with a backbone, a brain, and a style. In circles, she pushed her wheelchair around, for only in one arm had the strength yet been found. She breathed most days with no extra help and began to talk as the tubes came out. 
After six months of games for the brain and of play, there were now twelve words she could say every day. She could call to her sis or shout to her mom, Happy! She'd laugh to express life as fun. Finally. So happiness felt that her job was complete. Got to find a new child and make her life a treat. You and your family now laugh right out loud. Let's enjoy parting ways. Celebrate with your crowd. Happiness galloped, raced, reasoned down the street, and reason giggled in the carriage for it jiggled her feet. Her siblings competed and skipped to the tune that happiness made up as they ran under the moon. Reason squealed a word combo. I love, she soft smiled, grabbed her carriage wheel and circled a while. She sang a humming song and a glow lit her face, which quickly transposed it to an enviable place. Startopia. Every car that passed by slowed in driver amazement that a child in a chair could be so effervescent. After the goodbyes, Mum put Reason to bed and passed her palm over her sweet baby's head. Then, burnt by a fever so hot she cried out, Mum's happiness evaporated as the room filled with doubt. Reason's eyes were a glisten and her cheeks rosy red, the most beautiful ever. But within hours, she was dead. The doctor arrived, but reason was gone. So the most he could do was to hug on to mom. Well, far away in a restaurant, happiness sat, bragging of the child who no longer lacked. In that moment, when happiness answered her phone, she sank out of happy. To deathly alone. Happiness had never lost before. Happiness had opened every door. Happiness had made the world seem light. Happiness wasn't working tonight. Surprisingly, Mum sounded strong for those sad. She felt free of worrying for the future and what her child might be. Now she is dead, we will have to let her go. Have to stop wishing, hoping, and helping her so. Her life was so hard, but she now lives in my thoughts. And with all the work done, I understand why we fought. She was a beautiful girl who deserved the chance to feel that life could be fun and she could be real. You brought that to her, to her siblings and me, made us pretend till pretending made us see a person. But happiness couldn't be, couldn't hear all those words. Her pain was too loud and she screamed, how absurd! She threw down the phone and bellowed to the sky, Why did we do it? Come on, tell me, why? Why did we do it day upon day, teaching and laughing to learn while we played? Happiness sobbed out. It just shouldn't be that we spent all that time so that death makes her free. Happiness walked heavy all burdened with pain, not hearing the truth of that something to gain. <laughs> freedom is freedom, regardless of how, even when freedom imprisons like now. Trapped. Happiness gave up. She had lost all her fun. The reason gone out, the job not quite done. 
Happiness had always been everyone's gift, the way to begin a new way to live. Self-pity washed over. Why this? she bemoaned. Tears fell to the ground. No answers were known. She sat in her puddle, not willing to learn. No longer a conduit, needing her turn. And wave upon wave, the time passed in this funk, till slowly she realized a friend was among. The ambience of reason touched her first before sight. Then she saw a sweet glimmer and transparent light. Salvation. A form was growing so that happiness could see the answer, the meaning, the why it must be. <laughs> Till there was her friend, all full and complete. No chair, no poo bag, no feed tubes for fake treats. Reason said, silly, why do you funk so? You are the reason I smile, laugh, and glow. But you're dead, happiness cried. You could have done without me. You still would be dead. You still would be free. No, reason shouted. Listen and hear. Without you, I'd have brought my chair over here. It's because you helped me feel the feeling of strong that I could take flight and stretch my wings long, ascending. Happiness lamented, there's no way to accept. I can't pretend living with death on the step. You are not listening. I felt my body and heard myself talk. As I died, I realized I could stand. I could walk. Happiness thought for a bit, as in silence they sat, doing her best to imagine just that. But sorrow kills understanding and creativity. And imagining was, well, she just couldn't see. Sad brains make slow motion. So in slow motion they immersed, with happiness bemoaning and lamenting her curse. Reason questioned sharply to break the reverie. Really? If your results are invisible, then there's no value for me? Hogwash. And happiness got it. Snap out of it, or it will mean helping others was just about getting my own dream. As she flipped from self-pity, happiness envisioned this soul who could rise from her chair because someone had shown. Reason who had felt only one arm strong and true, had transferred that knowing all her body through. Then because of this learning, gotten out of her chair and walked toward the light with nary a care. Then happiness reasoned that with reason's spirit next to her, there was no need for sadness, for no loss had occurred. She swam in the eyes of this manifestation, seeing a mirage of her own creation, re-pretending. She'd finally got the message Reason wanted to share. Without me, in death as in life, she would have sat in her chair. Happiness grew happy to have supplied the recipe, the ingredients reason needed to make herself free. I taught her, she thought, so 
that she could read inside all those cereal boxes, books, and blessed travel guides. We played the brain games so that she could be smart. Reason interrupted her thoughts. Time for you to restart. I have feelings to feel and muscles to fly. You, my mom, and my friends should be happy and not cry. Thanks for your gifts. That's the point of being y'all, making it possible for me to not fall. Angels. The cherub dispersed, flew and dissolved. She can do that. Happiness thought, because I was involved. The sun peaked upon the horizon, creating a new dawn. I guess I'm a wingmaker. Happiness wondered with awe. Can it be that I'm special? A conduit for God? No, that can't be true. I know that it's not. Anyone could be me. I'm no different than others. It's just that I'm willing to believe and uncover that the power to help comes from making a decision with a following it through and an accompanying action. No room for doubt, just a journey to tread. No thought of fear cluttering about in one's head. Eureka! It's the choosing, committing, and becoming one thing that gives freedom to everyone, that makes makers of wings. Reason listened to happiness from her place at the gate. Oops, I overhelped. Now happiness thinks that she's great. She's self-blinding with pride, so impressed she can't know. She's gotten it wrong and conceit stops the flow of knowing and playing and making it be that others can come here like me strong and free eh, reason entered anyway took the grand heaven tour she looked at life's lockers lined up but obscured by one overfilled with the tumbling of wings it was happiness's locker for she's a collector of things insatiable. It occurred to reason this is happiness's way, overdoing it to keep going and creating through play. Most of the lockers had just one set of feathers, like moms and her sisters, a nurse and two others. Some just sat empty for adornment to wait, waiting and waiting for wings from the gate that came when an action of happiness helped all the receiver, the giver, the audience involved. Well, that's when a pair would magically arrive, when a person helped a wingmaker with a difficult life. For many, their wings took several lives to appear. For others, it happened in less than a year. Innocence. However, happiness had so many, she could change them each day of the week, of the month, of the year, a decade. Reason thought, hmm, a little overburdened she may be when she arrives. Still, there's no limit on loving or enjoying the ride. Hopefully happiness breaks the rule of conceit, doesn't get in her own way and lands on her feet. And even if she can't, she's already equipped with so many wings she can afford a small slip. Reason was different. She'd had her wings all along, just lost touch of the feeling of making them strong. She had lived a weak life so that others could rise, wings on their own backs, by coming to her side. Reason was the real wing maker. She hoped when happiness died she would generously share with the wingy capped who would need just one extra pair. So, though happiness was a collector and not the wing maker she'd deemed, heaven still valued her as always esteemed. Reason considered telling happiness of the future she knew you must be me in your next life, and then I will be you. This time
time you're not the wingmaker. That honor's mine. This time you're the collector, earning one wing at a time. I'm the angel who gave a life up for you, who put wings on the shoulders of all that were true and kind and hardworking and willing to wear the joy of persistence, the smile of I care completely. Reason almost chastised. What you forgot about my role makes you seem shallow for all you don't know. But instead, Reason smiled. After all, it's just fun living this life until the pretend play is done. Happiness used reason, but the reverse was true, too. She whispered a thought. You gave to me. I gave to you. With no one to save, no saviors exist. It's okay to feel happy and be doubly blessed. No need to understand if it helps you to believe. You are the wing maker, so be it. Be me. The feelings you feel, the way you behave, are the things that are real. Make you live like your name. Happiness. Reason reasoned, then flew to her life after death, while Mom gasped at the tingling that took away her breath. Reason's sisters and brothers, teachers and friends, caregivers and neighbors, shoulders tingled and then, wings fell into lockers, more for happiness as well, as she searched for a new friend to help and to tell of the joy that pretending can bring into life. Like making wings on your shoulders so you can take flight. Motivated by misinformation on that sparkly new morn, happiness danced, searching for someone new to adorn. Thinking herself the wing maker made her determined to spread halos around the globe on differently abled heads, pollinating. Reason smiled to think that her silence was the gift, the reason for happiness's chance at extra wings with more lift. Our story is over, though... There is no such thing. For endings, begin things, whether or not you make wings. This was inspired by the true story of Sarah Heather, Angelica Mansfield, January 15th, 1994 to October 19th, 2007. I love you, Sarah.